I'm going to leave it up there for you for the next few minutes because I want you to have a copy of it. I want you to screenshot it if you can. You might be able to just get your smartphone and take a photo of it. I think if you press pre print screen or print screen, P R T S C, and I can see a button on my uh, keyboard here which says print screen, you'll actually be able to get a physical screenshot of it. I'm going to leave you a couple of minutes or just maybe one minute to do that and then we'll talk a bit more about it. Okay, Phil, you just said, where have I gone? The sound has disappeared. Don't worry, I'm just giving you a few seconds to take a note of that blueprint, whether it's a screenshot, a photo, or whether you're just writing it down. A couple of things about this blueprint. I'm going to get more and more in detail and in depth about this blueprint as we go through this online training. I think the most value in this training and doing joint ventures is the blueprint itself because you always need a bigger picture. If you fail at any one of these, for example, let's say you've got the deal, maybe you can see my um, mouse over here. If you've got the deal, you know what you can offer the JV partner, you know what the JV partner wants from you, you know the different types, but you don't know how to sell or influence the property, the JV fails. Let's say you know all these five, but you don't know how to structure a JV, it fails. Let's say you know all these six, but you can't find the right types of investors and JV partners, the JV fails. So this blueprint is also your checklist, your template, your script, if you like, for ensuring that JVs happen. Now, because I've trained, what, 120,000 people? I've looked into 240,000 eyeballs over the last five or six years. I'd have to be an idiot not to know the common threads. I'd have to be an idiot not to know the same few things that make a, a relationship or a joint venture fail because I've seen it so many times, not just from you know myself but from our community members. I've, I've coached so many people through it that you need all of these to happen but it's a simple seven step process. I have this JV blueprint on my phone in my images folder on my iPhone and I carry it with me everywhere I go and I remind myself of this even though this is taken from my brain, from Mark's brain. So I think it's really important that you use it and keep it. Uh, I also would like you to be fair to us. Uh, this is our trademarked content. You know, I wouldn't like to think what I've invested in creating this, but you know, it's got to be five figures. Uh, and so um, please don't share it. Please don't share it with every, anyone. Uh, it is trademarked. Uh, I don't want to see it going up on Facebook. Uh, you, 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 know, you can't sell it on, uh, and we will take that very seriously. Uh, and, 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 you know, you know, we will pursue that legally if that's done. Um, so please use it per, for personal use. Um, at the end of the day, if a joint venture doesn't happen, you'll know why, because you've got this blueprint and it'll be one of those things. Simple as that. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few more seconds just to, if some, if some of you are writing this, you'll need a few more seconds. I'll answer a couple of questions while we're doing this. I want to leave this up just to make sure that you've got it. So Susan has asked, have you, have any of your JVs been in the USA or have you stuck to the UK? So uh, us specifically, Susan, we haven't done any JVs uh, on this basis in the US. Um, the, the rules of this apply just the same in the US as they would in the UK. The only difference is the legalities and perhaps a couple of the structures. So the blueprint and the concept and many of the details are exactly the same. If there are any differences to the US or anywhere else, Susan and anyone else, I'll let you know about that. So thanks for the question.
Okay, I've had a really good question here from Ed, Ed Morgan. Good evening, Ed. Great to have you here, and thanks for asking the question. Where would you say most people fail when they try to do a JV? Well, it's funny you say that, Ed, because at the end of this webinar, I'm going to give you the five top reasons why JVs fail, and obviously, you just reverse that back and make sure that you don't do them. Interestingly, there are some common ones, but at the same time, it's one of those seven. So some people, they spend all their time doing the analysis and the details and the legals, but they're just not very good at selling themselves. Some people, they don't know how to structure the deal. So when it comes to actually doing the deal, they don't know if it should be a straight a, a loan agreement or if it should be cut into the properties or whether they should have a deed of trust. They don't know how to structure it. Some people, they just can't seem to get in front of the right people. And they go out there and, and they spend a lot of time and energy trying to do this, but they don't seem to be able to look in the eyes of the people who've got the money. Some people, they're too focused on them and not enough focused on the JV partner and their wants and needs, and therefore the JV partner just isn't really interested. Some people can't find a good enough deal. So I've listed five there, Ed, and we'll go through the common ones. But you know, for, for me to be able to answer your question specifically, it's one of these reasons in the blueprint. And, and by the end of this webinar, or maybe you know, by the end of this webinar and two or three weeks worth of you know, being in the community and listening to other trainings and reading reports that we send you, you will know how to make every JV happen. And if it does fail, it will be something that you can repair and it won't be something that you just you know, throw your hands in the air and just don't know why it's happening. Okay, I'm going to take one more question going through. Okay, I've got a lot of questions here, so just bear with me one second. Okay, so Cliff, Rob, I want to find a JV partner with funds for what I think is a very good investment opportunity for someone I want to share. Okay, that's from Cliff. Haven't got your last name here. Thank you, Cliff. Maybe if you want to send me another message with a, a bit more details of what you're looking for, then I can address that. Uh, I, I'm, I think it looks like you've pressed return before you've finished your message. So just finish that message. I'll happily uh, answer that for you. Right, OK, let's move on. There have been lots more questions. I'll take them as we go. Right, so have you got the blueprint? Make sure you have. Make sure it's there. Uh, make sure you use it. As much as you're going to get a lot of detail, this is the most valuable thing in any joint venture, I promise you. OK. Right, so where should we start? Well, you could. There, there's no rhyme or reason to where we're going to start. So I just thought we'd start with what the JV partner wants from you. Here's what most people do wrong. And Ed, you're going to love this from your question before. Most people go into a JV and they're thinking, me, 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 me. I want this. I want this money. I want. I want 200 grand, I only want to pay 5% a year, I want it in my bank by next Friday, I want to do all the deals myself, don't tell me how to cook my own eggs, and that's what I want, and if you ain't having any of that, then you can whistle. And <laughs> Okay, you're not going to be stupid like that. But most people don't put themselves in the shoes of the JV partner, whose either money it is or who's finding the deals. They don't know what they want. And if, you, if you're in any kind of sales or marketing, you know what I'm talking about here. If you're in a relationship and you've got a really good relationship with someone, or if you've got children, you know what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about really understanding it from the other person's point of view. But what I'm not, I'm not giving you here is just fluff and ethereal stuff. I'm giving you the five-step model. These are the five things that people, it's proven that they want from a JV. And it's the Crest model. So we've created a model for it. This is progressive IP, by the way. Um, so if you do ever share this with anyone, please do credit us. But simply, it's Crest. And that's all you have to remember. Just memorize Crest. You'll, you'll learn the words in a moment. They're the five things that a JV partner will want from you. They're looking for you. And we're going to detail those now. So the first thing is credibility. Credibility. So I just want to check in. Just want to check in that you are with me. So let's have a look on the dashboard here. On your go-to webinar control panel, which has got lots of buttons and gizmos, there is a little, I think it's a right hand, a little right hand. 
Now, if you press that, that's like a, an E hand raise. Okay, so I just want to check that you are here with me. You can hear me. I just want to check in because sometimes you know people's lines go down. If you can hear me, if you're enjoying this so far, press that button, that hand raise button. So I just want to see, just press it once, okay, so I can see a lot of people's hand raise. That's great. Craig, Dave, uh, David, two more Davids, Derek, Donna, Ed, that's great. Jerry, Ian, Jim, Ken, Lou Vassian, uh, if I could call you Lou, uh, Lucky, Martin, great. Okay, so you get the picture. So, um, I'll check in with you once or twice through the evening just to make sure that you can hear me. So the first thing is credibility. If you're not credible, whether you're sourcing deals for someone, so you're getting the money from the JV, or you're giving the money, if you don't have credibility, the JV will fail. End of story. Now, you're probably going to ask me what credibility is. And the simple fact is, and you're probably smart enough to know this, that credibility means different things to different people. So credibility might mean proof that you've done deals before. It might mean that you're honorable. It might mean that people speak highly of you, that you've got a good, clean reputation. It might mean that you've got an online presence. If someone Googles you, now, it's different things for different people, and that's really important. We will, at the maybe in about an hour, hour and a half, we'll be, I'll be teaching you how to specifically find out what's important to the individual. But as you think, I mean, take a minute to think about what credibility means to you in someone who you're borrowing money from, or lending money to, or JVing with. Now, that means that that's what credibility means to you. It doesn't mean it means to the JV partner, but credibility, you know, are you the real deal and are you credible? That's the C part. R is return. You know, let's cut to the chase here. It's about making money. You're either borrowing money, and so you're going to be paying a return, or you're borrowing uh, leverageable funds that you are going to be giving something away for, whether that's equity, control, future growth some of the cash flow. Some people want return in ROI. Some people want to know what they own. And, and if you can't articulate or show and prove a return, many of your JV partners or potential JV partners will not want to invest with you. But again, the important thing here is that return doesn't mean the same thing to, the same, to, to different people. It's an individual thing. Some people, I mean, for example, Jeff Whitaker, who's um, one of our VIP community members, progressive uh, students, if you like, he looks at cash on cash return. So his return is based on how much cash he puts in. Other people look at return based on yield. Some people look at gross. Some people look at net. Some people look at physical amount on money. Some people look at return on investment. Some people look at return on the investment value. So yield is a return on the value of the investment. But cash on cash return is a return on the money you put in. Now, I know, you know I've given you a few details there. But return is different for different people. But it's return that people are interested in, but not everyone. Because some people are interested in some of these, some all of these. Some one of these. Exit's the next thing. Now, most people that you JV with are going to want to know what the long-term plan is. Is it put money in, get money out in three years at 8% a year? Is it put money in, own a percentage of the assets, and never take the money out because you own part of the business? Is it a, a combination of both? So. You know what? The more professional the investor is, the more the exit is important to them. Most angels and VCs I know, you're looking at probably maximum three-year exit strategy in terms of time. Most, most I know don't go up over five, whereas family members and, 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 clo and friends, they may not want their money back. They might, you know, the capital, they might just want the residual return ongoing. So that's exit. Then we have security. 
Now, to some people, security means first charge of the asset. To some people, a restriction or a second charge might be enough. To some people, it might mean a contract. To some people, it might mean a handshake. To some people, it might just mean that they trust you. Now, some of those wouldn't work for you. Some of those wouldn't work for other people. But don't assume that because you might want to fix first charge that all JV partners want that. But some kind of security, how is the money protected, they're going to want to know about and then trust. Most people, they want to get a feeling of trust from you. Now, interestingly, not everyone is. On one of our recent joint venture consultation days, this was probably going back three months, I uh, had 15 people in a room. It's a, a 5,000 pound kind of very high level, professional level training that we run. And I was doing this same exercise, the same bit of content, and I asked the group, so, to who is trust really important in a joint venture? It's the most important thing. And, you know, I think I'd say 12 people put their hand up. So, clearly, trust, you know, like that feeling is really important. And, and I said, uh, to how many of you would, if there was no trust, wouldn't do the JV and they all kept their hands up? So, basically, what they're saying is they wouldn't give their money or even borrow money from people they didn't trust. And I picked one particular person out just because, you know, he happened to look at me that way. And I said, okay, so what does trust mean to you? Because I was um, using one of the techniques I'll show you later. And he said, first charge on land registry. Because we all kind of laughed a bit and, and, and sat back in our chairs. So what he was saying is trust to him doesn't mean trust in the fluffy sense. It means fixed protection, security. And that actually, to me, would mean security, which is the S in the Crest model. So, now you have, let's just go back just to show you, you have the model, the five things that the JV partner wants from you. You've put yourself in their shoes, you know they're going to want to feel in some way that you're credible, that they're going to want to know their return, their exit, uh, what the security is, whether it's physical or uh, ethereal, and then a feeling of trust, whether that's physical or a feeling one or more of those things. Now, now that you know that, it really helps you structure the JV for more success because you're seeing it from their side, from their point of view. You're able to package your offer in a way that you know that they want it. 